On today's Daz tutorial, we're going to continue looking at our render settings. Uh, this time we're going to be looking at progressive rendering. So if you're new here or if you haven't done it yet, be sure to hit the subscribe button and maybe the notification bell. I do Daz tutorials pretty regularly. And uh, be sure to check back often so you never miss one of my new videos. Also, if you want to know any of the products that I'm using, I've linked to all relevant products in the description below, so be sure to check that out and I'll show you where you can purchase anything that I'm using in this video. So a few videos ago, we looked at uh, tone mapping, and today we're going to look at progressive rendering, which is a, another one of our render settings. So in order to get to progressive rendering, be sure that you're on your render settings tab, and then click on progressive rendering. And under progressive rendering, there are two subheadings. There is update and completion. And if you just click where it says progressive rendering, that'll have everything together. But I'm going to go ahead and break these up into two parts. First, we're going to look at update. And we only have two controls. We have minimum update samples and then update interval, which is measured in seconds. It tells us in the parentheses. So basically, these two controls determine what your image looks like while it's rendering. So normally when I do these videos, if I'm doing an iRay preview or if I'm doing a render, I usually cut that part out of the video so you don't have to sit and wait while my image renders. They can take anywhere from you know 30 seconds or so uh, up to a couple of hours, depending on the, uh, the complexity. So on this one, I've got a really simple scene. I've got a relatively uh, simple model. Um, got her clothing and her hair, which aren't super complex, and I'm using an HDRI dome, which generally render pretty fast. So in this one, I'm actually going to show you the rendering process just so you can see what's going on and how these controls affect everything. So in order to understand update samples, uh, you have to understand a little bit about how the images are actually rendered. And I like to think about it kind of like how an artist draws a picture, how they start off with kind of the skeleton and the framework. If they're doing a face, they're going to do their facial guidelines so they know like how to proportion everything to make sure the eyes are the right height and all of that. The longer they work on their drawing, the more realistic it's going to look um, by the time you get to the finished product if you're going for a realistic looking drawing. So if you were to stop them at any point before it's finished, you'll probably still be able to tell what the image is, but it just won't be finished. It won't, won't be refined. It won't be as perfect as it could be. So the way that uh, Daz does renders is by using um, what's called sampling. And basically it just does a scan over the image and it draws part of the image onto the screen. Basically just some of the pixels it draws on the screen. And then it'll do another pass and it'll do another round of pixels. And it just keeps on doing that. And the longer it goes, the better your final picture is going to look, the more, uh, the more realistic it's going to look. So again, every time it passes over that image, that's called a sample. And so this is telling you, uh, or this basically tells the renderer um, how often you want it to update the picture. So we have minimum update samples and update interval. So the update interval tells you how many seconds there should be between updates. And the update samples tells you how many scans or how many passes, how many times it should, it should go over that image before it updates. So for instance, by default, it's set at five uh, second update interval and one minimum update sample. So that means that every five seconds, if it's done at least one pass over the image, then it will update it in your preview window. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my, uh, hit my render button so you can see what that looks like. So as it's getting ready, um, it's all these uh, checkerboard, this checkerboard pattern is basically just a transparency. And it takes about five seconds before it starts to update. And then over here, um, I have my rendering image box where you can see the elapsed time. And then it has iRay iteration. That's basically how many samples. So it's already up to like 127 samples. And then it also lets you know iRay Canvas render target was written to Canvas. That's basically it's updating the picture in the preview window. And then we also have a value called iRay Convergence. There's 91.95%, um, and we're going to get to that in a moment. So something you might notice is that as this goes on, it gets harder and harder to render. So these last few percent take a while. We start doing fewer samples between updates. It starts getting a little bit slower, basically. Uh, until the final image is complete. 
All right, I'm gonna just go ahead and hit that cancel button on that right now. We don't have to let that render all the way. But uh, we got a we got a pretty good idea of what that's going to look like. So if I were to bump this up to let's say 20 samples and 15 seconds. So now um, it's going to update the image every 15 seconds as long as it's made 20 passes over the image since the last update. So let me hit the render button on that. And now you're going to see that it's going to go a lot slower, but every time it updates the image is going to be a lot more complete. So before, when it put the uh, the first image up, when it when it drew the first iteration, there was a lot of noise, there was a lot of like white pixels and a lot of dead pixels in it. This time it's going to take longer, but there's a lot less noise in the photograph. You still have some noise, especially in the hair, and it looks a little bit rough on the skin. But it's going to do another pass over that in just a moment, and it's going to look a lot more complete. So we'll give that a second. There we go, and there goes the next pass, and that image looks pretty good. I mean, it's pretty well, uh, pretty well complete by now. All right, so that is how the minimum update samples and update interval works. I don't believe that this has any bearing on how long it takes your image. Um, I think that if you have these on higher values, it might render a little bit faster, but I haven't looked into that in particular, and I haven't done any tests on it myself. Um, but I think that these are pretty negligible, I would imagine. So I'm going to go ahead and put these at the default values. Not zero, let's put that at one, and we'll put this one back down at five. There we go, just to leave it where it was. And next we're going to look at the completion heading. So this, these controls are going to tell the renderer when your image is finished. And I'm actually going to take these from bottom to top for right now. The first one is the rendering converged ratio. So as it goes over your image, as it's drawing the pixels, again, the pixels get more and more refined as time goes on. The rendering converged ratio is the percentage of pixels that have to be perfectly rendered before your image is considered finished. So if it's set at 99%, I believe the default is 95. I usually put mine at 99. I'll tell you in a moment why I don't go up to 100. Um, but if it's at 99, that means that 99% of the pixels in the image have to be converged or have to be finished. They have to be perfectly rendered um, before, your, uh, before your image can be complete, um, before it'll stop the rendering. The reason that I don't put that at 100 is because the closer it gets to 100% convergence, the longer it takes. Um, so uh, really going from 95 to 99, depending on how complex your image is, that can be a very, very long addition of time. Um, I've read some places that it's not possible to reach 100% convergence. So if you put it at 100, your image will just basically render forever until you stop it. Um, I've read other places that that isn't necessarily true, that it's not impossible to reach 100% convergence, but it takes a very, very, very long time. And for some images, it might be impossible. Again, I haven't really tested this on my own, but for my purposes, that 95% or 99% value uh, they all were, they were both work pretty well for me. All right, next we are going to look at rendering quality. This one is pretty simple to understand. It basically just tells you what quality your image is going to be. For the vast majority of images I do, I leave that on one. As you raise that, um, the rendering time uh, is supposed to increase linearly. For instance, if you put that on two, then it's going to take twice as long, theoretically. If you put it at three, it's going to take three times as long, and so on. Um, again, this one I usually leave it just on one, but if I have any weird artifacts or noise in the photograph or fireflies when it gets finished, sometimes I'll try bumping that up to 1.5 or two and re-rendering it. I don't think I've ever used a value higher than two for rendering quality. Again, depending on how complex the image is, how many polygons you have, how complex your models are, um, rent, upping your rendering quality can add loads of time uh, to your rendering time. So only use that one if you really feel you need to. The next one up from that is the rendering quality enable switch. This basically tells the renderer whether or not to care about rendering quality and rendering converged ratio. You can turn that off and from what I understand, it will just completely ignore these two things. So I usually leave that on. 
All right, and then above that, we have minimum samples, maximum samples, and maximum time in seconds. So this is basically the conditions under which your image will be finished rendering. So if you have minimum samples at five, that means that it has to sample the image at least five times before it's going to be done. Maximum samples means that it will render no more than 5,000 samples or 5,000 passes over the image before it's finished. And then max time in seconds, right now it's set on 7,200. That means it will go no longer than 7,200 in seconds before it's considered finished. I believe, uh, you can do the math, um, I believe that 7,200 uh, seconds is equivalent to two hours. Um, so if you have it set just like it is at the default, it will render at least five passes or five samples with a maximum of 5,000 samples and a maximum of two hours. So if it goes, uh, if it renders 5,000 samples, but it's only gone for like a thousand seconds, then your image will be considered complete. However, if it reaches two hours and it's only rendered 4,000 samples, it'll be considered complete. So basically, whichever one of these numbers is reached first is when it's going to consider your image complete. And then if you have a rendering quality enable, it'll render up to 99% convergence as well. So on this one, this is a relatively simple image. Uh, let me hit the render button on that one more time and we'll see what, the, uh, uh, what, our, what our values end up getting to. All right, I went ahead and sped up the video on that so you didn't have to wait through the entire thing. But a couple of things to notice. Um, first of all, oh, my log went away, I meant to save that. But the first thing you would notice is that um, it, it reached neither 5,000 samples nor did it reach 7,200 seconds. But rather, it stopped when my rendering converged ratio hit 99%. Because that image was, I mean, effectively, it was pretty well complete by that point. Um, again, if it had kept going, then it would have stopped when it hit one of those two, but since it hit the render and converge ratio first, it considered the image complete and it stopped the render. Uh, something else that you may have noticed is that my image looked pretty well done by the time it hit about 80 or 85%. Which brings me to another point to make is what should you set these values on? And that really depends upon your image. This one really isn't a very complex image. I knew it was gonna render very quickly. It only took a couple of minutes. So I let it go by the rendering converged ratio. Whenever it hit that 99% convergence, it was considered done. Um, honestly, I probably even could have put that a little bit lower. Like I said, it looked like, looked like it was pretty well done by the time it hit about 80 or 85% uh, convergence. Um, but you also probably noticed that as it got closer and closer to 99%, it started moving very, very slowly. Like the first 75 or 80 percent went by in like 15 or 20 seconds I think and then the remainder of it took just those last few percent to get all the way up to 99 percent convergence so if you're using an image like this that's not very complex you can just you know leave these at the default values just let it go until it hits your uh, desired converged ratio and just let it go from there um, something else that you can do is you can just babysit your render just sit here while it's rendering or if it's a really complicated one just check on it every few minutes and when it looks good enough for you just go ahead and stop the render and save your image so again, like I said, this one looked pretty good at about 80 or 85%. If I put that in Photoshop and blew it up a thousand percent and went over it with a fine tooth comb, I could probably find some dead pixels in there or some jagged edges. But if I were doing just a standard size, like this, I was doing it as a 4K image, if I just left it as a 4K image and the size that it was on, I think it would look great. Nobody uh, would be able to tell um, that, that that wasn't perfectly rendered on you know, a 4K monitor. Uh, one other thing to mention um, is that your renders will go faster if you're using an NVIDIA uh, video card. Um, of course, they use uh, a rendering 
engine called NVIDIA iRay, which is specially made for NVIDIA cards. If you're rendering off the CPU or if you're using an AMD, pro an AMD uh, video card, it is going to go a lot slower. So if you're really serious about DAS work, you really, really need to use an NVIDIA, an NVIDIA GPU in order to get your full uh, render speed. But that will do us for this one. Um, thanks for sticking with me. And if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button. Check the description below for the uh, products that I've used in this video, as well as some ways that you can support me and my work. And that will do us for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.